So you've probably found neat satellite images like this one off the internet and want to know how to create your own. So how do you do that? It's actually pretty simple. I'm going to show you how to, how to get that done. Go to your browser, put in Mikaitis. See that right there? M-C-I-D-A-S. And you'll get a few hits right there. And probably the fastest thing to do is go to your ssec.wisc.edu link under Mikaitis and Software and V. That'll take you pretty much right down to the main Mikaitis V page, and then you can click on Download to actually bring that into your computer. Okay, so Mikaitis is coming up right now. There we go. That's the first thing you'll see right there, the splash screen. And since this is written in Java, it will probably take a few more seconds than you're used to to boot up. The memory requirements are a little bit higher. However, once it starts up, you'll probably see a world view. In my case, I've been running it for quite a while, so I'm seeing a regional view of the Southern Plains, but either way, it's fine. What I want to tell you how to do is go to your Data Explorer. This should come up automatically. So there's your Data Explorer, and if for some reason it doesn't come up or you accidentally closed it, you can just go back to Mikaitis and go to Window and then Show Data Explorer. The Data Explorer is very, very important. And here's how you get started with it. What you do is you go to Satellite and open this tab right here and go to Imagery. And it will show you by default this adde.ucar.edu in Genie East. If you're on the West Coast, you can pick Genie West if you like. But for most of the rest of us, Genie East. Go to Connect. And it's going to connect to that data server and get like a list of different images. So that'll take a few seconds, and what we want to do is we want to pick one kilometer visible imagery. Now, unfortunately, it's nighttime as I do this, so I'm not going to get any visible imagery right now. But I can run this back and get some previous imagery just to make this work out. At this point, what you can do, what you can do is you can click most recent if it's daytime like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to absolute and pick out something for yesterday. So this is what you can do if it's nighttime and you want to look at previous images. And this actually goes back about one to two days. So if you missed some storm action, you want to check it out, just click on this absolute window right here. I'm going to pick out the 1815Z imagery. And if it's daytime for you and you picked relative and most recent, that's fine. We're going to do it the same way. Once we get it the way we want it, click on Add Source. Okay, got that? What it's doing right now is it's getting the meta metadata for the imagery. So what we'll do is we'll open this up, and right here under Fields, and we'll click Raw. Give it another few seconds right there for it to phone home or check lottery numbers or whatever it's doing. And now what I want you to do is click on Advanced. So you click on Advanced and you go all the way down here to see this Latitude and Longitude. What you want to do is click on this icon right here on off to the right and click on Center. That way it will sync it up with what's on the display on in the other panel. See, I've got it for the Central Plains. You can see it behind this panel. That's going to match it up with that. And then scroll this slider to it's over to 1. So line mag 1, elevation mag 1. And now click create display. Now it's going to download the imagery from the server. And this will take just a second. And once it does, you have your very first homegrown satellite image. Very easy, isn't it? We can... Click on the controls over here and zoom in on that. So that's pretty cool. We've got imagery of Colorado here and Nebraska and Kansas. 
and it shows some thunderstorms on the mountains off to the to the west on the Rockies. And the beauty of this is you can set up exactly what you want to show on that imagery. So we go over to Data Explorer, see over this layer controls. You go to see this default background maps, you click on that. And now you can use this panel to control what you want to show on your map. So we don't want county outlines, we can uncheck that. That'll leave interstate highways, and maybe we want to change the color, so we click on that, change that to yellow, click on OK, and that takes effect right away. So pretty cool there. Now, what if we want data for another area? Chances are, if you have just installed the software, it's going to download something for the central U.S. or all of the U.S., what we want to do is we want to set the projection to exactly an area we want. So let's pretend that we live in Illinois. So we're going to create our own projection. So what I want to do is go to this projection in the window and go to New Edit. And then what I'm going to do is click on New under the Projection Manager. That's going to pop up a new window. And what I prefer to do, I, I don't like this lat long, I like the Lambert conformal. That's what I like using for the temperate latitude. See, that's a pretty familiar map setup right there. And you could probably use these things to drag the mouse, drag the map the way you want it. Myself, I kind of, I'm pretty familiar with the latitude and longitude around the U.S., so I like actually keying it in. And if you want to do it that way, you set the origin latitude and longitude exactly where you want the map centered. So Illinois is going to be at about 40 north and about 92 degrees west. So negative is always the western hemisphere. And we can give that a name. We'll just call it Illinois. Click Save. Now to actually get it to take effect, what we need to do is go back to this projections menu and go, go, go to predefined and then click on Illinois. It's going to be zoomed out pretty far but we have to zoom that back in using this shortcut right here and we're pretty well centered on Illinois. We can adjust that a little bit like that and there we go we got Illinois right there in the center. Let me fix this a little bit here. There we go so we're a little bit more centered. Now if we want to look at satellite imagery for Illinois, what we actually we have to we actually have to reload it. So if we want to reload the data, the easiest way to do this to not make a mess is we start with the layer controls right here. So in the Data Explorer, layer controls, we want to click on whatever product got downloaded, not default background maps, but the visible imagery, whatever it was that we had downloaded. Select that, go to File, Remove Layer. Okay, backtrack to Field Selector and right click and go remove this data source like that. Okay, there's probably a little faster way to do that, but I'm just going to do that for now. So this brings us back to our original selection of 18Z data, or you, you might be looking at most recent data. That's fine. I'm going to go with the absolute data here since it's nighttime, and I'm going to go to Add Source again. I'm going to redo this real quick. So we're going to kind of start from the beginning a little bit here. Go back through here, click on raw like I did earlier. And remember after you do that, you've got to go to this advanced tab that's going to pop up here shortly. And once it does that, now it's going to start out with the center latitude and longitude of the image. This location here, that's pretty close to Illinois, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on center here, and that's going to correct it a little bit. Check that, and then make sure this is on one. So we get one kilometer imagery, and then create display, and that's all that we have to do. So we'll see your Illinois imagery pop up shortly. going to take a look here at Illinois in the middle of summer. I'll zoom in here a little bit. 
So there we go. And if we want to add our counties, that's pretty easy to do. I can Alt Tab, bring that up and go to Layer Controls, Default Background Maps, click, click on the county outlines. So there we go. We can isolate these towers down to the individual counties that we're going to be forecasting for. So this is almost as good as radar as far as you're now casting because this these towers will form 15 to 25 minutes before they start appearing on radar. So this can alert you right away to where initiation may be occurring. So this is a great tool to have. A lot of the weather websites, they don't have this county overlay that you see here. So this is kind of like an ace card as far as storm forecasting. Well, as far as other stuff, what do we want to look at? Uh, I'm going to wrap this up here shortly since this is just a very beginner introductory lesson to Mikaitis. Oh yeah, I'll show you one little neat thing. Say we want to look at infrared imagery. And that's not going to be very useful for Illinois because the cold cloud tops are very small. Don't cover a whole lot of area. I think for that I'm going to want to go to... Boy, I don't know. Let me take a quick look at some of the satellite data for yesterday. Let's see, satellite imagery from FAA. And it's taken forever to come up, but we'll get there eventually. Must be coming in from the ISP over Morse code or something. Actually, you know what it is? I'm uploading today's forecast video through YouTube, and so a lot of the bandwidth is being hogged up by that by that upload. I'm going to look at water vapor imagery. Actually, yeah, it's nighttime. <laughs> Forgot it's nighttime. We can just get current imagery, so let me do that. Contiguous U.S. So who's going to be the guinea pig for infrared imagery? We're going to do our own. And I think we want to probably look at, uh, yeah, there, there, this looks to be interesting. There's a little bit of junk over western Arizona, kind of unseasonable, unseasonable for this time of year. It may be serious debris, but we'll take a look and see what's going on. So we're going to look at the western, the goes west imagery. So here's how we set this up. I'm going to go backtrack, remove layer. Field selector, remove that. So we got that all cleared out. I'm going to use relative. So I'm going to look at new stuff. And before I start loading anything up, I want to go back and set the location of the image. So if I want to do this really, really quick and not spend a whole lot of time, I can just pick U.S. and southwestern U.S. You know, that'll work. I'll zoom in on the southwestern U.S., get the map about how I want it. It's a little bit like that. So our window is all set and I'm going to go back to the data ex explorer. Okay, so now I'm going to change this to Genie West since we want to look at West Coast stuff. Connect to that. I'm going to download the list of products offered by that server. And instead of picking the one kilometer visible imagery, I'm going to pick infrared. And the tightest infrared imagery we get is four kilometers. So I'm going to go through this list until I find one uh, four kilometer IR imagery for the West US. So let's take a look through here. What uh, bandwidth are we looking for? We're looking for 10.7. That's going to be your classic infrared 10.7 3.9 that's near infrared 12 is getting into the water vapor spectrum so let's see is this at four kilometers yep 10.7 yep western conus okay that'll work now a lot of times it'll default to five most recent i like to click just most recent if i'm not going to animate it this will save bandwidth and so on okay so add source so we got that all set up. So now it's checking the metadata. You can click on temperature, but that's going to give you 
that's going to give you an inverted color scale that's not going to work very well with the color tables that we have. So we go down here and we make sure we have this centered and we can increase the image size by changing these. This will give you a much larger area if you plan to roam your products. Look across a, a wide area that will really help you out if you increase those values. And then we always click these sliders over to the right. That will give us our 4 kilometer infrared imagery. So we click on create display and that will pull in our satellite data for Death Valley, Grand Canyon, all that stuff. So there we go. There's our infrared imagery. And that's for 5.15 a.m. Central, 4.15 a.m. Mountain. So how do we get those neat colors like we have on the commercial products in the university websites? Well, that's where we go to our data selector and we click on the color table. So we change from grayscale to one of these offerings right here. And using that, there we go. That looks pretty close to what we have over on the FAA site. So right there near Lake Havasu City, Kingman, a little bit of enhanced cloud top, and that's very similar. In fact, thanks to our handy-dandy McIdas, we can find out exactly what county has those cold cloud tops. So this is going to be kind of a colder, cellular spot. That's probably some dissipating showers. As far as what we have over Las Vegas and up to the Nellis Range, I'm not exactly sure. So this is showing that there's clear skies over the Southern California coast right there. Actually, we, we can't say clear skies because when we are talking about stratus and fog, especially off the coast like we normally see in the summer months, that tends to be invisible to, to infrared imagery. So we can be very certain that there's no high or mid clouds, but low clouds, that's kind of up in the air. We don't exactly know what's going on off the coast. We have to look at surface observations and uh, visible imagery if we have it for the pre-dusk hours. And if you have DMSP imagery, you can look at the moonlight, low-light products, and that'll, that's another way to find cloud uh, cloud textures. And elsewhere, thanks to the fact that we increased the image size, we can roam around and look at other parts of the western U.S. In fact, over to Texas, there's a few showers. This red that, that we have right here, that's thunderstorm activity. And the white around it, that's a lot of anvil debris. And up here in Oklahoma, it looks like a little bit of gravity waves, transverse banding, something like that going on right there. All right, anything else I want to show you? I think that's probably about it for our intro to Mikaitis. That should give you, give you plenty enough to get up and running. And it's got a lot of neat little features. Like if you want to find out exactly where the cursor is, Look down here to the lower left. It's got a readout that shows you the Latin long. So if the counties aren't good enough to pinpoint where the cursor is, you can use that lat long readout. In fact, you can even make the precision a lot higher by going to edit, preferences. Gives you a little pop up here and you can go to navigation controls and actually formats and data. There we go. And you can change the lat long format to something that's got more precision. So maybe something like that. So we apply. And sometimes you have to switch screens to get it going. There we go. Come on, wake up. And you can see the, the readout in the lower left right there is a lot more precise. We're down to thousandths of degrees. So all kinds of neat little features in here, and you can explore this. But everything that I've shown you so far is how to get it up and running. And you can, if you have downloaded multiple products, you can use this area right here, this part of the window, to actually animate the charts. There's nothing to animate because I've just downloaded one image, but there you go. So now you know how to create your own satellite images, and maybe in the next couple of forecast workshop 
series. We'll go into more depth on nikitis and other tools like that. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in another workshop presentation.